In the competitive field of software testing, being prepared for your interview is crucial. This video will guide you through the top 25 interview questions and answers that you can expect to encounter. From understanding the basics to handling complex scenarios, this comprehensive guide will equip you with the knowledge to ace your software testing interview. Let's get started and ensure you are ready to impress your future employer. 1. What is software testing, and why is it important? Software testing is a process designed to evaluate the functionality of a software application with an intent to find whether the developed software met the specified requirements or not and to identify the defects to ensure that the product is defect-free in order to produce a quality product. It is important because it makes sure of the customer reliability and their satisfaction in the application. It is very essential to ensure the quality of the product. Quality product delivered to the customers helps in gaining their confidence. Software testing is crucial as it helps discover errors and issues in the software before it gets released to the end users. This process ensures that the software performs as intended and meets the user's expectations. It helps to prevent bugs and issues in the overall performance of the software, ensuring its reliability, security, and usability. Without testing, a faulty software can lead to loss of business, unhappy users, and in worst cases, even human lives, in case of critical software like healthcare applications. Therefore, software testing plays a pivotal role in the software development lifecycle. 2. Can you explain the difference between manual testing and automated testing? Manual testing involves a tester manually conducting each test case and comparing the results to expected outcomes. This method requires a significant amount of time and effort, but it allows for a greater level of detail and individual scrutiny. Automated testing, on the other hand, uses software tools to execute test cases and compare actual outcomes with expected results. This method can save time and effort especially for repetitive tests, and it can increase efficiency. However, it may miss out on details that a human tester would notice. Manual testing tends to be more suitable for exploratory and usability testing, where human intuition and judgment are valuable. Automated testing is better suited for regression testing, load testing, and repetitive tasks where precision and speed are crucial. Both types of testing have their strengths and weaknesses, and the choice between them depends on various factors, such as the specific requirements of the project, the available resources, and the stage of the development process. 3. What are the different types of testing, e.g., unit, integration, system, acceptance? Various types of testing can be implemented throughout the development process. Unit testing involves checking individual parts of the code to ensure that they operate correctly. Integration testing is focused on confirming that different modules or services work together as expected. System testing, on the other hand, tests the entire system to see if it meets the specified requirements. Lastly, Acceptance testing is conducted to ascertain whether the system is ready for delivery and meets the end user's needs. Each type of testing plays a crucial role in ensuring the quality and reliability of the software. Different types of testing have different objectives and are used at different stages of the software development process. For example, unit testing is usually performed during the development phase to catch errors early, while system testing is done after the completion of development to ensure that the entire application works as expected. Acceptance testing, on the other hand, is often the last step before the software is delivered to the end user. By performing these different types of testing, we can ensure that each component of the software works correctly on its own and in conjunction with the other components, and that the software as a whole meets the user's needs and expectations. 4. What is the difference between functional and non-functional testing? Functional testing is focused on examining the system's functionality. It aims to ensure that the software behaves as expected, in accordance with its requirements. This involves testing the system's features, capabilities, and the correct response to user interactions. On the other hand, non-functional testing evaluates the system's performance under varying conditions, its security, reliability, and usability among other aspects. It is concerned with how the system operates, rather than what it does. This kind overall testing is vital to ensure that the software is robust, user-friendly, and can handle stress and high loads. Testing both functional and non-functional aspects of a software application is crucial in order to ensure its quality and reliability. The functional testing validates if the software behaves as per the specified requirements. It involves testing the user interface, APIs, database, security, client, server applications and functionality of the application under test. Non-functional testing, on the other hand, is a type of testing to check non-functional aspects, performance, usability, reliability, etc., of a software application. It is designed to test the readiness of a system in accordance with the non-functional parameters which are never addressed by functional testing. Thus, the key difference is that while functional testing verifies what the system should do, non-functional testing verifies how the system should perform. 5. Explain the concept of test case and its components. A test case in software testing is a set of conditions or variables under which a tester assesses whether a system or one of its components is working as expected. The components of a test case include an identifier, a name, the objective, 
a set of inputs, expected outputs, and execution preconditions. The identifier and name help in uniquely identifying the test case. Test case objective succinctly describes what we are trying to verify using the test case. The inputs are the data that we feed into the system to check if the system behaves as expected with the provided inputs. Expected outputs are the results we expect to get after executing the test case with the provided inputs. The execution preconditions describe the state the system should be in before we execute the test case. Understanding the test case concept and its components is important because it helps in ensuring that our software is working as expected and helps in catching any bugs that may exist in the system. 6. What is the Software Development Lifecycle, SDLC, and how does testing fit into it? The Software Development Lifecycle, SDLC, is a procedural method used in system development to describe a process for planning, creating, testing, and deploying an IT system. It includes several stages such as requirement gathering and analysis, design, implementation or coding, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Testing is an integral part of the SDLC it occurs after the implementation phase where the developed software is tested for errors and bugs. Testing in the SDLC process is significant as it ensures that the software functions as intended, making sure that all issues are identified and fixed before the final deployment. A well-conducted testing process within the SDLC helps prevent post-deployment issues, reduces development costs, and ensures that the end product meets the user's expectations and requirements. 7. Describe the Agile testing process. How is it different from traditional testing? The Agile testing process is closely tied with the Agile software development process, which emphasizes collaboration, customer feedback, and small, rapid releases. Testing in an Agile environment is iterative and flexible. As soon as a piece of functionality is developed, it is tested. This can lead to issues being found and resolved more quickly than in traditional testing. Agile testing also encourages the use of automated testing tools for regression testing to ensure that functionality is not broken with the introduction of new features. This is in contrast with traditional testing where the focus is more on manual testing and a big bang approach, where all features are developed before they are tested leading to a delay in feedback and potential accumulation of issues. In Agile, testers are part of the development team and are involved from the inception of the project, unlike traditional testing where testers are often a separate team brought in after development is completed. The main aim of Agile testing is to deliver a product of the highest quality, while traditional testing often focuses on finding defects. 8. What is the role of a quality assurance, QA, engineer in a development team? As a key player within a development team, a quality assurance, QA, engineer ensures that the software product meets high standards of quality, reliability, and performance. They are involved in all stages of the software development process, from initial design to final testing. QA engineers meticulously inspect every aspect of the software product, identifying any potential issues, bugs, or defects that may impact its functionality or user experience. They also design and implement testing protocols, document test results, and work collaboratively with software developers to fix any identified issues. By doing so, QA engineers help prevent problems and ensure that the final product delivers on its intended purpose. 9. What is the difference between black box testing and white box testing? Black box testing and white box testing are two distinct methods of software testing. Black box testing focuses on the functionality of the software without any knowledge of the internal workings or structure. It's entirely concerned with inputs and outputs, ensuring the software behaves as expected. In the contrast, white box testing involves a deep, inside look at the software's structure, design, and coding. The tester has full knowledge of the software's internal workings and can accurately identify which part of the code is being executed by specific tests. This thoroughness allows for more precise test cases and can help identify potential areas of improvement. The primary difference between black box testing and white box testing lies in the tester's knowledge of the system under test. In black box testing, the system is viewed as a box whose internal workings are unknown. The tester is only concerned with input and the output produced, with no concern for how the output was produced. This type of testing is suitable for system validation. On the other hand, white box testing, also known as clear, open, structural, or glass box testing, is where the tester has complete knowledge of the system under test. This method is essential in system verification, ensuring the internal mechanics of the system are functioning as designed. This type of testing allows the tester to look inside the system. By using both types of testing in tandem, testers can ensure the system is working as expected both internally, code level, and externally, user experience level. 10. Can you explain the concept of regression testing and its importance? Regression testing is a type of software testing process that ensures that the previously developed and tested software still performs as expected after it has been changed or interfaced with other software. Changes could include software enhancements, patches, configuration changes, etc. The importance of regression testing lies primarily in the risk of side effects. Change in one section of the software may trigger issues in another part, which was functioning perfectly earlier. 
So, it helps to identify such issues. Regression testing is of utmost importance in the software development process. It ensures that any changes, upgrades, or modifications made to the software application do not disrupt the existing functionalities. This type of testing is crucial as it helps maintain the system's consistency and integrity, even after alterations are made. It gives the development team the confidence that the new changes have not adversely affected the existing system. This can be especially crucial in complex systems where changes are frequent. By continuously testing the system after each change, the team can ensure that the software remains bug-free and performs optimally at all times. 11. What tools have you used for test automation, and what are their advantages? I have utilized several tools for test automation, such as Selenium, TestComplete, and Postman. Selenium is a popular tool due to its flexibility and capacity to work with various programming languages, including Java, C Sharp, and Python. Its ability to operate on different operating systems and browsers is a significant advantage. TestComplete, on the other hand, is a robust commercial tool with a user-friendly interface that supports both script and scriptless automation. It also has built-in integrations with other tools, which makes it easier to fit into your existing workflow. Postman, primarily used for API testing, allows for easy creation and execution of tests. It also supports continuous integration, making it a valuable tool for the Agile process. One must carefully choose the right tool, considering factors such as the project requirements, team skill set, and the application under test. Remember, there isn't a one-size-fits-all tool in test automation. 12. Describe your experience with bug tracking tools, e.g., JIRA, Bugzilla. I have extensive experience using bug tracking tools such as JIRA and Bugzilla in my previous roles as a QA engineer. My familiarity with these tools has been instrumental in managing and tracking defects throughout their lifecycle. Using JIRA, I have been able to create and track issues, prioritize tasks, and collaborate with the development team more effectively. I have leveraged its powerful search and filtering capabilities to find specific issues and also used it for reporting, sprint planning, and managing backlogs. Bugzilla, on the other hand, has been useful in simpler projects requiring straightforward defect tracking. It is easy to use, and its email notification feature has been very handy in keeping the team updated about any changes in the status of the bugs. In all, these tools have been vital in ensuring transparent, efficient, and effective bug management in all my projects. 13. What is your approach to selecting a testing tool for a project? When selecting a testing tool for a project, my primary consideration is the specific requirements of the project. I assess the kind of testing required, whether it be functional, performance, or security testing. I also take into account the technology stack used in the project, as some tools may not be compatible with certain technologies. Compatibility with the existing systems and processes is another crucial factor. The testing tool should seamlessly integrate with the current workflow, other tools, and technologies used in the project. Cost is also a significant factor. While a tool may offer a wide range of features, it may not be feasible for the project due to budget constraints. So, I look for a tool that provides the necessary features within the allocated budget. Finally, I consider the user-friendliness and support provided by the tool. It should be easy to use, and adequate support should be available to troubleshoot any issues that may arise. 14. Have you worked with performance testing tools? If so, which ones and what did you test? Performance testing is a critical aspect of validating a system's stability, speed, and scalability under workload. I have indeed worked with performance testing tools throughout my career. One of the primary ones I've used is Apache JMeter, a popular open-source Java application designed for load and performance testing. With JMeter, I was able to simulate heavy loads on servers, networks, and objects to analyze performance and measure the system's throughput. Another performance testing tool I've used is LoadRunner by MicroFocus. It provides an accurate picture of end-to-end -end system performance and helps identify and isolate issues. My tasks involved testing the application's responsiveness, stability, and speed under varying load conditions. I've also used Gatling for testing web servers, especially for applications built with Scala, Java, or Kotlin. The tests I conducted mainly involved stress and load testing to ensure the applications could handle expected user loads. 15. What is continuous integration, continuous deployment, CI, CD, and how does it relate to testing? Continuous integration, continuous deployment, commonly known as CI, CD, represents the combination of coding practices and tools used to reduce errors during integration, and ensure swift, reliable product updates. In essence, CI involves integrating code changes into a shared repository frequently, which leads to multiple integrations per day. Each integration is verified by automated builds and tests, minimizing the chances of encountering complex bugs later on. In relation to testing, CI, CD ensures that every code change is validated against the test suite, catching any potential issues early on. It also makes sure that the software is always in a state where it can be deployed to production, which makes testing more efficient. 
The CD part of CI, CD further extends this by automating the deployment process, which can also include further stages of testing. CI, CD is a crucial component of Agile and DevOps practices. It allows teams to catch bugs sooner, improve software quality, and reduce release times. This approach to software development ensures that testing is integrated throughout the process, rather than being a separate stage. It encourages a culture where software testing is seen as everyone's responsibility, not just the QA teams. 16. How do you prioritize test cases in limited timeframe? In a limited timeframe, prioritizing test cases efficiently becomes crucial. Firstly, I identify the high-risk areas that have the greatest impact on the software's functionality. This includes all the major functionalities that the user will frequently use. Secondly, I prioritize the test cases based on the business needs. The features that are most crucial to the business are tested first. Then, I classify the test cases based on the complexity and dependency of the modules. The modules that are most complex or have the most dependencies are tested first. Lastly, if time permits, I execute the test cases that are less important from a business and functionality perspective. 17. Describe a challenging bug you encountered and how you resolved it. During my tenure as a QA engineer, I faced numerous intriguing bugs, but one that stands out was a sporadic issue related to the user login functionality. Users were occasionally unable to log into their accounts, with no discernible pattern or frequency. Identifying the root cause was challenging due overall to its inconsistency. I approached this problem methodically, first documenting every occurrence with as much detail as possible. I used different user profiles, devices, and network conditions, and also scrutinized server logs. After several days of comprehensive testing, I found that the issue only occurred when the backend server was under heavy load. I communicated this to the development team, and they discovered a race condition within the authentication module. It was rectified promptly, and after retesting, I confirmed that the bug was indeed resolved. This experience underscored the importance of meticulous documentation, robust communication, and perseverance in software testing. 18. How would you handle a situation where a developer disagrees with your reported bug? In such a situation, I would first ensure that I have clearly understood the bug and the expected behavior of the software. I would then gather all necessary evidence, such as screenshots, logs, or steps to reproduce the bug, and share this with the developer in question. Communication is key in these scenarios, so I would discuss my findings with the developer and listen to their perspective. It's possible that there might be a misunderstanding or difference in expectations that can be clarified through discussion. If we still disagree, it might be helpful to involve a third party, such as a project manager or another developer, to provide their input. It is important to remember that our common goal is to improve the quality of the software, and every reported bug contributes to that goal, whether it is accepted as a bug or not. 19. What would you do if you discover a critical bug just before a release? In such a situation, I would immediately inform the necessary stakeholders, providing all relevant details about the bug. The impact and severity of the bug would guide our next steps. If the bug severely hampers functionality or poses a security risk, it would be necessary to delay the release until the bug is resolved. If it's less severe, a temporary workaround could be provided while we work on a more permanent solution. In all scenarios, clear communication with the team and stakeholders is crucial to ensure everyone understands the situation and the steps being taken to resolve it. 20. How do you ensure that your testing covers all required functionalities? In order to ensure comprehensive testing, it's crucial to have a deep understanding of the application under test and its requirements. I start by analyzing the requirement documents and creating detailed test cases that cover all possible scenarios. I also ensure to include positive, negative, and edge case scenarios in my testing. To cater to the different types of testing, I leverage various testing techniques such as boundary value analysis, equivalence class partitioning, and decision table testing. To keep track of what has been tested, I use a traceability matrix which maps test cases to requirements ensuring each requirement has sufficient test coverage. Periodic reviews and retesting help keep the test coverage updated as the application evolves. Communication with developers and stakeholders is also crucial to ensure that all aspects of the functionality are being considered and tested. Lastly, if resources permit, I employ automation to extend the coverage of testing and ensure repeatability. This approach helps me to ensure that my testing covers all required functionalities. 21. Can you describe a time when you had advocate for quality in your team? In one of my previous roles, I encountered a situation where a new feature was being pushed for quick release without comprehensive testing due to time constraints. I had to step in and explain the potential risks associated with launching the product without thorough testing. I discussed the negative impact it could have on our customers if they faced issues with the new feature, and how it could tarnish our brand's reputation. I stressed the importance of not compromising on quality for the sake of speed. It was a difficult conversation, but in the end, the team agreed to delay the release until the feature was fully tested. This incident strengthened my belief in standing up for quality, no matter the circumstances. 22. 
How do you stay current with new testing methodologies and technologies? In this ever-evolving tech world, it's crucial for me to stay updated with the newest testing methodologies and technologies. One way I do this is through continuous learning. I often dedicate some time every week to read about new developments in software testing on various tech blogs and websites. I also participate in webinars, workshops, and conferences that focus on the cutting-edge technologies and methodologies in testing. In addition, I have joined several online communities and forums where software testers from across the globe share their experiences and insights. These platforms not only help me stay informed about the latest trends, but also allow me to learn from real-life case studies and scenarios. Lastly, I invest in getting certifications that not only validate my skills but also ensure that I am updated with the current best practices in the industry. This combination of self-learning, networking, and formal education helps me stay on top of the latest trends in software testing. 23. What do you think is the most important quality for a tester to have? In my perspective, the most essential quality that testers should possess is critical thinking. This allows them to anticipate potential problems and assess how an application will behave in various scenarios. They also need to have excellent attention to detail, as even the smallest error can cause significant problems. Adaptability is crucial as well, as testers often work in rapidly changing environments and need to adjust their testing strategies accordingly. Lastly, communication skills are vital, as testers need to convey their findings effectively to the rest of the team. 24. Describe a time when you had to work with a difficult team member. How did you handle it? In my previous role, I had a team member who was not very cooperative. Despite multiple attempts, he was reluctant to collaborate effectively. This was becoming a hindrance to our project progress. Instead of getting frustrated, I decided to proactively address this issue. I requested for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. During this conversation, I communicated my concerns honestly but respectfully, focusing on the effect of his behavior on the team's productivity. I also asked him if there were any issues that he was facing which might be affecting his cooperation. By initiating this dialogue, I was able to understand his perspective better. We both agreed to work on our communication and cooperation. Over time, our collaboration improved and we were able overall to contribute positively to our team. I believe that open communication and understanding are key in dealing with difficult team members. 25. What motivates you to work in software testing, and where do you see yourself in the next few years? The world of technology fascinates me and I am drawn to the problem-solving aspect of software testing. The thrill of finding bugs and the satisfaction of improving product quality keeps me motivated. Seeing how my work impacts the end-user experience gives me a sense of fulfillment. In the next few years, I see myself growing into a senior role, leading a team, and shaping testing strategies to ensure the delivery of high-quality software products. In wrapping up, we've traversed the top 25 software testing interview questions and their answers. This deep dive into the broad spectrum of software testing knowledge should bolster your confidence and ready you for your upcoming interview. Remember, the key is to understand the concepts thoroughly, rather than rote memorization. We hope you found this content valuable and informative. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more useful content. Happy learning and best of luck with your interview.